for 18, you're looking at f minus g of x, and it tells you it tells you that f of x is a function x squared minus 9, and it tells you g of x is a function which is 2x. And those are the only two you need for this question, right? So it asks you, what is f minus g of x? What does that mean? What does f minus g of x mean? Yes, Gabby. F. Yep. Of f of negative g of x. No, it does not. Chris. F of x minus g of x. It means f of x minus g of x. This is minus. This is not composition. This is subtracting the two functions. So literally all you do is, what's f of x? x squared minus 9. And what do you subtract? 2x. So what do you end up with? x squared 2x minus 9. And I like writing it that way. Why is that the proper way to write that function? Decreasing, decreasing powers. Decreasing powers. Exactly right. So this just means subtraction. That thing you were thinking about, Gabby, that's function composition. That's the open dot. That's not an open dot. That's a minus sign. That's not an open dot. So 21, 21 says f minus h of x. So what's that one mean? And it tells you uh, h of x. x squared minus 9. Means x squared minus 9 minus what? H is x minus 3. X minus 3. You literally just subtract the two things. So what do you end up with? X squared minus... Nope. Oh. Minus x minus what? Minus 6. Exactly, because you have to add 3. Good job. Other questions? Any section that you covered last night? Any, any section you covered last night? Make up a couple functions. Construct means make up. Okay? So it says, what does degree 3 mean? What does degree 3? To, to the third power. So you make up anything you want that has an x to the third in it. Anything you want with x to the third. In g of x, a polynomial of degree 4. So g of x is a polynomial of degree 4. What does that have to have in it? Can it have anything higher than x to the fourth? No. If it was higher than x to the fourth, we wouldn't call it a fourth degree polynomial. Can you add anything you want after this? Yeah. Sure. But are these okay, right? Like this? Those are the simplest ones you could do. Now it says find f minus g and g minus f. So what is f minus g of x? x. Minus x to the fourth. And what's g minus f of x? Correct. Yeah. So did we get the same thing, by the way? Is this the same as this? No. So does the order matter in subtraction? You know it does. You've, you've seen that before. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. 3 minus 3 is 1. They're not the same number. Commutative means you can switch it. Can you in this case? No. No, you can't. Bertie. Same section? Yes. 51. OK, so on 51, it tells you 1,280 is. Feet in a mile. Yep. Computes the number of feet in miles. What is f of g of x and what does it compute? So it's asking you for this f of g of x. So what does that mean function wise? What are you plugging into what right there, Chris? Does it mean f of g of x? Yeah, so it means f. So what are you plugging into what? You're plugging in um, g into x. G, just say you're plugging g into f. Okay, yeah. Plugging g into f. For the x is in f. That's yeah. correct. So what was f? f was 12. Instead of x, you're going to write g of x. Yeah. But what is g of x? 5, Correct. 5,280x. And that is multiplication now. So that's going to, and could you multiply that out if you wanted to? What is it, Chris? 12, 12 times 5,280? What is it? Mm hmm. 63,360. 63,000 what? 360x, right? Because there's an x still there. So the second part of this question is what's really important. The first one computes the number of inches and feet, and the second one computes the number of feet in a mile. So what does this function tell you? It's this is the number of what in what? Inches in a what? In a mile. Exactly. Because how would you calculate that? If I gave you a number, if I gave you a number of miles, and I wanted to know how many inches it was, you'd be like, okay, times 12 for feet, and times 5,280 for miles. And that's what you did right there. That's what they want you to do. It tells you the number of inches in a mile. Next. Everything times everything. everything times everything. So how many things, how many terms are there in the first parentheses? Four. Four. How many terms are there in the second? Two. So how many products are you going to have to do? Eight. Eight of them. Exactly. So just keep track of all of them, and it's relatively straightforward. What's this one? 6z to the fifth minus what? 15z to the Nope. Fourth. Fourth. 
I was doing the, yep. So now we do this one to this one, minus 4z to the what power? Fourth. What about this one right here? Plus 10z to the third. Then we have 2z squared. That's a bad z. I missed the cross. 2z squared and minus 5z. Now we have to do these. Minus what? 10z and then plus what? Are we are we done at this point? No. no, you need to carefully combine what? Combine exactly like terms. So let's look at these one by one. Are there any other, any other terms like that one? No. So that one's just 6z to the fifth. So let's look for the fourth power. I see the fourth. Do you see any, any other z's to the fifth in there? They have to be to the fifth. Like yes. Terms. Like terms have to have the same power. To add or subtract things, they must have the same power and the same base. So how many, do you see any other z to the fourths? Yeah. Yeah. I do. Yeah. How about right next to it? So how many z to the fourths do I now have? Negative yes. So minus 19z oh. to the fourth. And what about z cubes here? No. So I just have one of them, right? Yeah. So this one's plus 10z cubed. Now I'll go back to go to yellow here. Any other z squareds? Yeah. Nope. So that one I'm going to have plus 2z squared. Ah, but what about, what am I back to here? Yeah. My, how many, so how many total? Minus 15. Minus 15, exactly. Because there's no Z on it. So then what's this one go to? Any other pairs? Plus what? Now are we done? Yes. Everything times everything, and literally just make sure you keep track of it. Do it piece by piece, it falls together really nicely. But what's that phrase? Not foil, remember. Everything times everything. Really, really just do everything times everything. So everything times everything. How many products do we have to do in this one? Four of them, exactly. So what's this one going to be? Yep, and then we do that one. Minus 6m plus what? 30m minus... Are we done? It's going to be minus what? Oh, plus 24m, sorry. Minus 18. Now you're done. Mm -hmm. Everything times everything. Everything times everything. Hannah. This one looks a little different because there are two variables, but does the method change? No. So you do 6c times 2c is 12c squared. 6c times 3d is going to be 18cd minus 2cd minus 3 nope d squared. Now, are there things that we can combine? Um, yes. So it's 12c squared plus 16cd minus that. Mm -hmm. Correct. Hannah, thank you for raising your hand. Please don't try to do every step at once. So kids, what does the, what's the most common way to do this one wrong? This does not equal what? Zero. X. No. No. <laughs> no. No. Don't do this. Peter Griffin says no. Okay? So this equals x plus y times x plus y times what? So when you attack this, what should you do? How should you go about attacking this? Everything by everything. You're doing everything by everything eventually, but don't try to do everything, everything at once. So which, what do you do first? The first, two. the first two. So do the first two things. Do these two first. So what's x times x? x times y? y times x? xy again. Why did I write it as xy? Uh -huh. And y times y? Can I simplify this? So that is x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. Because how many xy's do you have? You have two of them. You have one apple and you have another apple. How many apples do you have? Two of them. Now, though, what do I have on the outside this whole time? X plus Y. Gabby, you have a question? No. Yeah. What, what do I do now? Everything by everything, but do it in pieces. Exactly. So what's X squared times X? X squared times Y? X squared Y. And then 2xy times y, times x, so x squared y, 2x times y, and then what's y squared times x? xy squared, and I'll make that a square, it's not a 2. 
And then what's the last term? Y to the third. Now, do we have any similar terms here? We have two x squared y's there and an x squared y right there. So what does that mean our answer is going to be? x cubed plus how many of these do we have here? 3x squared y plus, are there any other terms that are similar? Here and here, how many do I have? 3 again. 3xy squared plus, is there anything else we can combine here? No. What's the one thing that people might be tempted to try to combine? Gabby. The 3x squared. Yeah, but are they like terms? No. No, they're not because in one of them x is squared and the other one x is not. In one of them y is squared and the other one y is not. Yes? Why is the answer so 